Hi everyone, and welcome. Today we will take a closer look at the German fast attack craft P6122 Puma, a remarkable vessel that belonged to the very last series of missile boats of the Type 143A Gepard class. These ships formed an important part of the German Navy during the Cold War. They were designed specifically for operations in the Baltic Sea, where their primary mission was to hunt down Soviet ships, strike with Exocet anti-ship missiles, and protect the German coastline from potential threats. The Gepard class represented an evolution of the earlier Albatross class. The key difference was the replacement of the forward gun mount with a modern ram short-range air defense system, significantly improving the ship's survivability against aerial threats. In total, only 10 vessels of this class were built between 1982 and 1984, making them a relatively small but highly specialized fleet. They remained in service until 2016, after which they were retired and replaced by more advanced corvettes. One of them, P6121 Gepard, has been preserved as a museum ship in Wilhelmshaven, while another was transferred to the Ghana Navy. In this video, we will explore the plans, design, and features of the P6122 Puma in detail, and see how it embodied the technological and strategic thinking of its time. When you look at the P6122 Puma, you are seeing more than just a single fast attack craft. You are seeing the result of careful German naval planning during the tense years of the Cold War. The Gepard class was designed by the well-known shipbuilders Lersen, a company with decades of experience in creating Germany's famous Schnellboot. Construction of the entire class took place between 1982 and 1984 at shipyards in Germany, producing exactly 10 ships in total. But why did the German Navy need a new class at all, when the Albatross class was already in service? The answer lies in technology and changing threats. The Albatross boats carried powerful weapons, but their air defense was limited. By the late 1970s, the Navy recognized the growing danger from aircraft and anti-ship missiles. To survive in modern combat, the new class had to carry a far more effective system. That is why the Gepard class introduced the RAM, rolling airframe missile, launcher, replacing the old forward gun. This upgrade gave the ships a reliable shield against aerial attacks, while still keeping their offensive power with Exocet anti-ship missiles. Only 10 ships were built, not because they were unsuccessful, but because they were designed as a focused improvement, an evolution, rather than a completely new fleet. The German Navy needed just enough to cover its strategic role in the Baltic and North Seas. Their mission was clear to patrol, to defend the coastline, and, if needed, to strike quickly and decisively at any Soviet naval force that entered their waters. As we move closer to the details of the P6122 Puma, let's take a look at what made this fast attack craft such an effective tool in the Cold War era. First, the general characteristics. Puma displaced around 390 tons, with a length of almost 58 meters and a beam of 7.8 meters. She had a shallow draft of only 2.6 meters, which allowed her to operate close to the coastlines of the Baltic and North Seas. With a crew of just 35 to 36 sailors, the ship was compact, efficient, and perfectly suited for fast reaction missions. The heart of Puma was her propulsion system. She carried four powerful MTU 16 volts 956 TB91 diesel engines, delivering nearly 18,000 horsepower combined. These engines drove four separate shafts, giving the vessel a top speed of 40 knots, that's over 70 km per hour on water. For a warship, this was remarkable speed, and it allowed the Puma to strike quickly and then disappear before the enemy could react. 
Her range was also impressive, reaching about 2,600 nautical miles at 16 knots, giving her the endurance needed for extended patrols. Now let's focus on her main armament. At the core of her offensive punch were four MM-38 Exocet anti-ship missiles, capable of delivering devastating strikes against much larger vessels. The Exocet had already built a fearsome reputation by the early 1980s. Developed in France by Aeros Possiol, it was designed as a sea-skimming missile, flying just a few meters above the water's surface. This made it extremely difficult to detect on radar and even harder to intercept. Each MM-38 had a range of around 42 kilometers and carried a 165 kilogram high explosive warhead. Launched at high subsonic speed, the missile would use active radar guidance in its final approach, homing in on the target with deadly precision. In combat, a single hit from an Exocet could disable or even sink a modern warship. The effectiveness of the Exocet became world famous during the Falklands War in 1982, when Argentine forces used it to sink the British destroyer HMS Sheffield and later the transport ship Atlantic Conveyor. These events proved that even a relatively small missile could change the course of naval battles. For the German Navy, arming the Gepard class with Exocet gave them a powerful deterrent. And here is something remarkable, while the MM38 itself is no longer frontline standard in most NATO navies, its successors, the MM40 Exocet Block 2 and Block 3, remain in service today with many countries around the world. The design has been continuously upgraded with greater range, improved guidance systems, and enhanced resistance to countermeasures. In other words, the Exocet family is still very much alive, and it continues to embody the same qualities that made Puma's missiles so dangerous in the 1980s, speed, stealth, and deadly accuracy. For surface engagements, Puma was equipped with a 76mm Otto Malara compact naval gun, an effective weapon against both ships and coastal targets. What truly set the Gepard class apart, however, was the addition of a RAM air defense system, a 21-cell launcher designed to intercept incoming aircraft and missiles. The RAM system was developed jointly by the United States and Germany during the late Cold War. Unlike older gun-based defenses, RAM relied on guided missiles that could detect, track, and destroy incoming weapons before they reached the ship. On the Puma, the system consisted of a 21-cell Mk-49 launcher, loaded with short-range RAM missiles. These missiles were extremely fast and highly maneuverable, using both passive radar homing and infrared guidance. That meant they could lock onto the radar emissions or heat signature of an incoming missile, chasing it down even in the chaos of electronic countermeasures. But RAM was not only effective against missiles. It could also be used against enemy aircraft, such as attack jets and helicopters, that tried to engage the boomer. This gave the ship a much wider defensive envelope. In theory, a formation of Gepard class craft, each armed with RAM, could cover one another, creating a protective network against air assault. In terms of real-world effectiveness, RAM has proven itself over decades of testing and operational service. It has been upgraded through multiple blocks, with longer range, smarter seekers, and better resistance to countermeasures. Modern versions are even capable of engaging some types of drones and precision-guided munitions. By replacing the old forward gun of the Albatross class with the RAM launcher, the designers gave the Gepard class a crucial edge. To round out her arsenal, she carried 12.7mm machine guns for close in defense and could even be fitted to lay naval mines. Taken together, these features made the Puma a well-balanced warship, fast, lethal, and far more survivable than her predecessors.
Although the Gepard class fast attack craft were heavily armed and designed with a clear mission in mind, it is important to understand that none of these ships, including P6122 Boomer, ever saw real combat. Their service lives unfolded entirely during a time of relative peace for Germany. Instead, their role was centered on training, readiness, and deterrence. For decades, these ships regularly participated in NATO naval exercises, where they simulated high-speed attacks against larger fleets, rehearsed coastal defense strategies, and tested their missile systems in controlled environments. One particularly interesting fact is that these ships often acted as test platforms for new weapon systems, most notably the Ranmair defense system, which later became standard on larger German warships. When we talk about the name Gepard class, it is important to note that not only Germany, but also Russia built ships under this designation. The Russian version, however, is a very different type of warship, officially known as Project 11661 Gepard frigates. In total, six ships of this class were built. Two of them, Tatarstan and Dagestan, entered service with the Russian Navy in the Caspian Sea, while four more were exported to Vietnam, where they serve as the backbone of the Vietnamese Navy. So, what makes the Russian Gepard class different from the German fast attack craft? The differences are fundamental. The German Gepards were relatively small, high-speed missile boats. Their primary mission was to hunt Soviet ships, strike quickly with Exocet missiles, and then disappear before the enemy could react. The Russian Gepards, on the other hand, are full-sized frigates, much larger and more versatile than their German counterparts. While the German ships displaced around 400 tons, the Russian versions displace over 2,000 tons. They carry heavier weapons, including anti-ship missiles, modern air defense systems, torpedoes, and even anti-submarine warfare capabilities. Instead of being limited to coastal defense, these ships were designed to operate on the open seas. The Russian Gepard class frigates did develop a combat history of their own. They were actively used in modern conflicts. One of the most notable moments came in 2015, when the frigate Dagestan launched calibre NK cruise missiles against targets in Syria. The missiles were fired from the Caspian Sea, traveling more than 1,500 kilometers to reach their targets in Syria. However, their story also reflects the changing nature of warfare at sea. In 2024, two Russian Gepard class frigates were disabled at their base in Kaspisk after being struck by Ukrainian drone attacks. These operations, carried out by Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, relied heavily on unmanned aerial and naval drones, which had already destroyed much of Russia's Black Sea fleet. The remaining ships were forced to retreat to Novorossiysk, abandoning their positions in Crimea. This shift tells us something important, the age of traditional naval dominance is facing a new challenge. Once, fleets relied on size, armor, and missile power. Today, small unmanned systems can outmaneuver and cripple even heavily armed warships. The case of the Russian Gepard class is a striking reminder that naval strategy, like the history of warfare itself, is constantly evolving, on land, in the air, and at sea. Thanks for watching.